Following the discovery of the protomolecule on Phoebe by Martian scientists, the Protogen Corporation, an Earth-based interplanetary corporate entity, began carrying out a series of experiments designed to test what the protomolecule was capable of and how it functioned. After a long series of tests, which took place on Phoebe Station, several of which involving sacrificing staff members to the protomolecule to observe how it interacted with human biology, the decision was made to transfer some of the protomolecule to Eros for more experimentation, including a large-scale release on the station. Protomolecule samples were loaded onto the Amun-Ra-class stealth ship Anubis in preparation for the journey. Meanwhile, OPA operative Julie Mao, daughter of Jules Pierre Mao, the CEO of the company that owns Protogen, managed to uncover the Protogen plans to transfer this as-of-yet unknown biological weapon from Phoebe to Eros, and concocted a plan to intercept it. With the assistance of Anderson Dawes on Ceres Station, she was able to charge a ship known as the Scopuli, a freighter based out of Eros. And as the Anubis was departing Phoebe, the Scopuli set off to intercept it. After a difficult time tracking down the stealth ship, the Scopuli was finally able to intercept the Anubis. However, they were unable to board the Anubis when they were surprised to find that the stealth ship was, in fact, armed. However, much to the surprise of the crew of the Scopuli, the Anubis did not open fire on the vessel with its own weapons, instead doing a close flyby and deploying several breaching pods to the Belter vessel. Protogen marines were quickly able to overtake the small, lightly armed freighter. While many members of the crew of the Scopuli were executed, only a few were spared, including Julie Mao, likely because she was the daughter of Jules Pierre Mao. Instead, the survivors were thrown into solitary confinement on board the Anubis. Meanwhile, the now commandeered Scopuli was towed to a nearby asteroid and set up for an ambush. A beacon placed on board the Scopuli would broadcast a distress signal, meant to lure in the passing ice hauler, the Canterbury. The the intention behind this was to stir up political drama, which would distract the system from the ongoing experimentation surrounding the protomolecule. The Canterbury, which was originally built as a colony ship, was now being used by the Pure and Clean Water Company to transport ice harvested near Saturn back to Ceres for distribution. Having just completed a long ice harvesting trip out by Saturn, the Canterbury was now bound for Ceres with a large haul of ice when it detected the distress signal from the Scopuli. While there was debate on board the Canterbury as to whether to respond, the decision was ultimately made by acting executive officer James Holden that the Canterbury should respond to the distress signal of the Scopuli. A small number of crew members of the Canterbury were loaded onto the Canterbury's one lifeboat slash skiff, the Knight, which was then deployed towards the Scopuli to investigate the distress signal. Meanwhile, the stealthy Amun-Ra-class frigate the Anubis positioned itself to hide behind the asteroid, using its stealth capabilities to its advantage. Remaining undetected, it observed the activity of the Knight as it approached and docked with the Scopuli. The crew of the night traversed the interior of the Scopuli, looking for signs of distress, only to find the ship completely abandoned, with no signs of the crew having been killed on board, and no signs of any serious damage that would have cost the ship its functionality, aside from a large hole in the side where the Anubis's breaching pod had docked. The investigation did, however, discover a beacon that had been planted within the bridge of the Scopuli, which was transmitting the distress signal. A beacon which the crew of the night inaccurately believed was Martian in origin. It's around this time that the Anubis was detected by the crew of the night and the Canterbury, and the crew was ordered to return to the night and prepare for an evacuation. As the crew arrived at the night, however, the Anubis lined up its shot, firing three torpedoes, not against the night, but instead against the Canterbury. The debris field from the destruction of the Canterbury would ultimately destroy the Scopuli, and send both the Knight and the Anubis fleeing into open space. The Knight, now heavily damaged, was set adrift, while the Anubis continued on course to Eros, only to find itself facing a much larger issue. At some point during the engagement, the protomolecule had been released on board the Anubis and was now spreading out of control. Well, the crew of the Anubis did the best they could, shutting down the reactor and trying to turn off as much of the electronic equipment on board as possible, it was useless in stopping the protomolecule, which eventually consumed the reactor and nearly consumed the entire vessel. The only survivor on board the Anubis was, ironically, Julie Mao, who had been captured from the Scopuli, taking the Anubis's only shuttle, Anubis A-1, to nearby Eros. The Anubis itself was left hidden in the shadow of an asteroid for later recovery. Meanwhile, the Knight left adrift was picked up by the Martian warship, the MCRN Donager, which had detected their distress signal. However, still believing that the destruction of the Canterbury was carried out by the Martian Navy, the survivors on board the Knight sent out a signal to the system 
system, accusing Mars of destroying the Canterbury. Ultimately, though, while the survivors of the Canterbury were being interrogated on board the Donager, it came under an attack by a large force of Amun-Ra-class stealth ships of the Protogen Navy. If you'd like to learn about how that engagement went, I'll leave a link in the upper right-hand corner to my battle analysis on the destruction of the Donager. And if you have any battles you'd like to see covered in future episodes of Battle Analysis and added to the archive, let me know down below in the comments. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.